Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Uh, we just had a lot of snow here in Saskatchewan. I'll give you a little quick glimpse of what, uh, what's been going on the last couple days. We've been struggling with the snow. Another blizzard hit us. City hasn't come by yet and picked up the snow. It's in the middle of the street. Snow everywhere. Busy cleaning up snow. Um, but today we're working on the Thunderbird and I want to uh, get this out of the way. But anyway, I want to work on this piece right here. This, uh, light treat my eyes there. This piece on the inside of all this needs to be cleaned up. There's uh, undercoating, there's uh, dirt and everything. So I want to go and clean all that. But I also want to start replacing this section right here. I've been working on a little bit on the, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, I've been working on the uh, inner fender here, or the, uh, well it's the outer wheelhouse is what it is. I've also been doing a bit of work to this area, so I got it filled in, I got the flange, finally, finally got the flanges put on, right there, I got that uh, support piece, this one here uh, all welded in, it's not welded in up here, like at the top, but it's welded in all through here. Um, some grinding to do yet, but this needs a piece, uh, an extension for the rocker needs to go on this as well. And I got it uh, primed, and, uh, etched primed and painted and then red oxide over top of that again. So there's lots of protection there for that. But first, I better go outside and I need to get a piece that I want to try here. So let me get uh, dressed up and we'll head out to the, in the deep snow and see what we can do. All right, I have to head over to where that ladder is and I'll be right back. Hopefully you guys can still hear me while I'm going. It's a lot uh, nicer out now. It was minus 30 this morning, Celsius that is. But it's, uh, it's come up quite a lot. Well, at least the wind's gone down, so it's, the wind chill's not there anymore. Anyway, let's go out and get a piece that I'm looking for here. All right, you're gonna lose track of me for a second. See if I can find this. There's snow, it's buried in the snow. I'm right up to my knees now. But I did remember, I think, in the, in the fall, where I put this stuff. Well, I guess you're probably wondering why I brought this old rusted quarter panel in. Well, this, these areas right here, this isn't so good here because it's got some filler in it, but this section here, on well, this section here actually can be used. This is a good piece here, good piece there. And I believe right about here all the way back is good. And from about here all the way back is good too. Uh, the door, the gas door lid got in my way. I, I should have brought the other quarter panel in because it's the same, just reversed. So what I'm after here is the crown and whatnot, which will already match the, uh, the Thunderbird. This piece here is probably where I'll grab it from, but I'm going to cut it all out because it's an excellent chunk of metal. It's not rusted in here at all. I only need enough section to go over just over the wheel arch, like from where are we at? Right from about here over to here on this the back part of it. So I think in this section right here would probably do it. It doesn't matter how where this ridge is because I, I have good metal up higher. Anyway, that's why I brought it in. I'll see how it works. I mean, uh, I mean worst case scenario, I don't use it for anything on this part of it, but it's all still good metal. It's factory metal, not that it matters. And if that doesn't work, I have another, I have new metal to work with. Plus I also have the other quarter panel on the other side. And they're all rusted about the same. So this, I'm not cutting up anything of value. Well, 
that fits pretty good actually. Fits in there nice and snug. And that's hardly, that's just holding it with that clamp so it's not pulled in tight. So that's a pretty good uh, piece. Look right down in there. Fits along there nicely. So now I'm going to uh, roughly cut out, oh sorry. Now, well first I'm going to do a Clecos. I'll put Clecos in so that I can get it in the same spot every time now. And then I'm going to roughly cut it out and then I'm going to try to get a nice, uh, an over, a bit of an overhang arch and then I can start putting in a, uh, a fender, a lip for that uh, quarter panel. Might end up using the, the uh, fender skirt as a guide, but I have it and that's the way it goes. And uh, that's a good piece of metal, it's solid. If you can see on the other side, it's, I cleaned all the old stuff off, it's just like clean shiny metal in there. So well, that's good and this is what you see here is uh, old primer stuff left on I didn't go in too deep on it I just wanted a decent surface to work with all right so let me get some Clecos in and then I'm gonna plan the next step like I say it'll probably be just roughly like going on the inside and just tracing out following the old wheel arch and then cut it off but first we have to lock it down with some Clecos so I have a line I'm gonna take it off now and just cut it off and that will get me closer to this old original wheel arch before like that's that right there is with the uh, flange missing that step down flange the step down is for the wheel skirt gasket so I brought it all the way around so I'll get rid of this piece right here and it'll get us a little closer and on the outside I've got some Clecos put in probably more than I needed but they're cheap because I already have them Oh yeah, before I cut this piece off, I wanted to show you guys how much crown is really on these. There's quite a lot. They don't look like much. Now from front to back, there's not, on a short distance, there's not much. These are, they're, but they're not perfectly flat, these Thunderbirds, even though they look fairly flat. But it's hard to tell with a short, yeah, right there you can see it rocking back and forth. So they're not flat. The even either this either way they both have some uh, crown on them so yeah I just wanted to show that because you look down the side of these old Thunderbirds they look reasonably flat but they they truly aren't there there aren't cars built that are flat I think some of the old Jeeps and stuff had kind of a flat panel but for the most part every car has a bit of a crown to it one way or another and that's why using uh, just flat metal it's great if that's all you have, but if you're, if you're trying to fix a panel with a crown in it, which they all have crown, you have to form some kind of a crown in it for, if you're using flat brand new steel. That's why I chose to go after these. It's already done. It's done the way the factory did it. And uh, if you didn't have it, or if I didn't have these old quarter panels, I would have to get the English wheel out and put some shape in it. Because that's what that is, is shape this way and this way. So some shape in it. So if you're fixing a car and you're just using flat steel, you need to get a way to put some shape in the metal to match what's there. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it's not gonna look right when you're done and you're gonna end up using a lot of body filler. So I got the arch. I'm leaving this here for now, a good support. Leave it there. This stuff here, I'm gonna build separate and we'll all be welded together. But for now, I wanna make this whole upper arch. So this metal here really is good um, the upper arch, like this is gone, like it's thinned right out. So I'm going to have to get rid of that anyway, but it's, I'm leaving it there for a guideline as usual. This is a little tight here for, for this metal like I have. So I'll get another piece of metal and I'll go up just a little higher and I'll get a piece that will fit sort of like that. This is all good. So I'll just get a piece of the same, from the same fender. And I think I'll take the piece over here this piece right here because this is a good solid piece and if I just snip it off there and this will be gone because that's where the arch will be so I'll end up using this section right here starting to look like a wheel arch now I screwed up a little bit I cut it a little too short but I wanted it on this end it was uh, the metal was rusty and had some filler in it so I cut it back not thinking about this end here but that's not the end of the world because I have a piece I just cut out of out of here and I'll just bring it back and I only need a little tiny bit of it just like that so I do have a, a piece that's exact same fit 
I'll probably cut an area like that out and weld it in. This is solid here, it's fine. This will be built in one piece, this whole section that goes down, and I'll have to make it out of new metal because I don't have anything to work with there. But this is pretty good. Uh, it's fitting down nice, of course it will with the Clecos, but you can tell it's fitting flat. I've got lots of uh, metal up top. And uh, this here, these fenders have been loose for a while, so there's a bit of a, a floppiness happening here. But once I weld that, I'll weld these two pieces together and make them one, and then all the Cleco holes will all still fit. And I'll always have a piece now to fit there, and then after that, it's, it's putting this flange on. I guess that's the next step, is uh, finding out where the flange absolutely needs to go and getting one made for it. Well, it's all one piece now. So I took and uh, welded it, and I did a little hammer and dolling because I got a little heat in it, more than I should have, so I gotta get better at that again. But now it's got the right crown. Put it back on, cleaned off all the old paint and whatnot. Uh, I'm not gonna do, this is as far back as I am going to go, and I'm gonna do a 45, so I'll be marking off at some point a 45 on this, just to keep the, so I don't have that corner going up there on both ends to weld to, so I'll just cut it off on a 45. There's no reason to take good metal away if you don't need to. And I'm gonna check, I'll probably cut this down, likely, but since I was foolish enough to put a Cleco right where I need to cut it, I'm going to leave it for now. It'll get cut in, the time, in time. Uh, so, but I do want to talk about something that if you guys get these things, these grinding discs. Now, I'm not sure who makes these links, I think it's called. I got them on Amazon. I got them about two years ago. This is the way they came. And there was a pack of 50, I think it was. They were cheap. They do grind. I mean, they'll, they'll work for a little while. There's nothing wrong with that part of it. The grit seems to be fairly decent. They're uh, aluminum oxide, I believe. But if you get them like this, because that's how they came. This is how they came in the package, bent. Send them back right away. Don't even open the package. I've been fighting with these things for, well, ever since I got them. And I believe it's been almost two years. And I actually, I went and bought other ones that are flat. And I'm almost out of them, so I wanted to use these up. But these are just horrible. And actually, you can see when you go to straighten them, they'll actually break. That's what happens to them. So they are dangerous when you start straightening them because they start to fracture. So I'm just saying if you, and I don't often say negative about stuff, you know, but I think this is important enough. You, you know, you're paying your hard-earned money for this stuff. That's just garbage. And if you're the manufacturer of these, shame on you. But I'm doubtful you even care. But anyway, uh, send them back. Don't even open the package, just send them back. All right, back to work. <laughs> so with all that said, I got my rant out of the way. I, that's been bothering me ever since I got those things, and I should have sent them back, but I needed them at the time. And once you open the package, you know, it's hard to do things. Anyhow, enough of that. So what I did, uh, while I headed off doing the, the welding of the making it all one piece, I did take some more out of this. And this is as close as I want to get. This is almost where it needs to be. I wanted a one spot that was very, very close to the original right there. And I should take a grinder and clean that metal out. I think I will. Because what I'm going to do, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to put the fender skirt back in. Because this is, if you're not familiar with these cars, and I think most of you guys are, this, is, this indent or this step down on this flange is for the gasket on the, on the, wheel, on the fender skirt. I keep calling wheel skirt, but it's fender skirt. And it needs to be there or your fender skirts aren't going to fit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the fender skirt back in and I'm going to take a set of ga a gauge, a micrometer, and I'm going to measure the distance. So that's why I wanted one spot that was close. That's why it's closer. And then I'm going to put some uh, black marker all on there. And then I'm going to, I'm going to measure the distance and then I'm going to follow the, use the fender skirt as a guide and etch score in where it needs to be cut off. And I'm gonna go from there. So let's get that done. There it is, he's in place. Uh, I took my jumbo marker, Sharpie, went around the perimeter of what I'm gonna be doing with this piece of metal. I wanna be very mindful of how these fender skirts line up with the body lines, front and back. As you'll see, if you look at the pictures of these old Thunderbirds, any of them, pretty much any one. There's been, I think, one or two that I've seen 
over the years with the fender skirts mounted where they were up in place. Most of them are always dropped down just a slight bit, around about there in the back. And it's funny, that's the first thing that you notice. It's an odd, odd thing. And it doesn't mean anything, but it just looks funny. And, you know, I think that's the way they were from the factory. I really don't know, or that rear pin got loose or whatever it is. But it just, your, your eye goes right to it. So I'm trying to be mindful enough to keep it as much as I can up where it needs to be. And I've been basing a lot of my work off of these lines to keep that fender skirt straight. So I also want to mention that this whole area, I'll do this far back with the, with the flange that I'm working on now. But this whole area back, it's going to be separate. I'm, so I'm not focusing on that at all uh, for now. Um, most of my focus is on this area right here that we've been talking about, the uh, torque box uh, and, of course, also the outer wheelhouse and, of course, the wheel arch and this part of the fender. This will here... We'll get to that when we get to it. You can only do so much at once. All right, so let's get back to this. I'll get my micrometer and we'll put a, we'll etch a marker on there. And that's what I'm going to use as a guide. So I got a score mark or the etch mark all the way along. I mean, it's not perfect. So I'm going to have to go up close to that line and see how it is. And I'll just tune it in slowly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off the patch panel off and I'm going to start with the grinder just taking some off at a time and putting it back on, putting it off, putting it on. That's how it goes. She's looking pretty spiffy now. So anyway, I, uh, I got it pulled back pretty much. It was hard to see in there, but that's the original fender or quarter panel line right before the flange dips down, that little indent. It's 8.71 millimeters if anybody wants to know. Might come in handy, you never know. It's there, I wrote it on the fender, quarter panel rather. It needs a little bit more clean up here, but now this is all fine tuning. So what I have to do now is get rid of that old uh, flange that's on there. There's not much of it left. This I won't bother with, I'll just cut the old one off, what's there. And then I'm gonna go work it with, uh, with the air grinder and just kind of blend it so it's all fairly even. It won't take much because it's very close now. So what the idea of this is, just in case uh, you're watching and you lost track of what I'm up to here, by taking this, I got it all lined up again, by getting rid of this little lip that's still on here, the old original lip, back some, if I grind that back so that just disappears, then my new flange goes on and I can weld it. I can make it with, uh, right on the edge of that the, as a pattern plus I can just bring it in and weld it right on the edge like that right on the corner and I'll have lots of uh, to grind off and also I'll weld on the back side and uh, grind it out and that'll give me a good solid joint right there I could just go like that and that's fine too and I may I'm who knows whatever turns out the easiest to do but the plan right now is to try to get a corner then I grabbed a piece of sheet metal, I marked off one inch in, uh, hoping that'll give me a, like enough flange left over because I think it's about three, it's about three quarter flange, or a little less than three quarter, about five eighths flange on those fender wells for the quarter panel part. So now I have to do the step down. So what I did, I set up my joggled eyes right here and I'm going to run right along that line. So what I'm doing, I'm lining up the upper joggled eye with the... Uh, line and that should give me a good a good amount on the outside to work with here so now i'm going to go one full turn and it was a turn and a half it seemed to work well so i'm going to go backwards for now it's a little fast but i'm going to keep going it seems to be okay <laughs> i have to bring my block back with me my switch Easier with two people. I gotta take these, these glasses off. There we go, so I can see a little further out. All right, let's keep going. And then we'll bring it back and we'll go the other way. 
All right, I'm not going to take it right off because I want to come back the other way. If I can keep it on that line, I'll be good. <laughs> and we'll just come right on through. That should give us a pretty close joggle. If not, well, we'll do it again. All right, I'm going to go around to the other side because this is too big of a piece to work with here. My glass is back on. All right. And I can use the shrinker stretcher to form any kind of arch on this. All right, that's not going to be deep enough. So I'm going to go another half turn. And I'm going to go in reverse and another half turn. And we'll do this again. Good thing I put lots of cord on this thing. There we go. I need a guide, that's what I need. But this isn't too bad. All right, I'll come around the other side. I think this is going to look good. That's two, that's uh, two turns down on this joggle dies. Ooh, I'll get off track here. Whoa, back on. There we go. These glasses I have on, I can't see very far. Good up close, but not good for distance. All right. Take it right off. I think that's going to be good. You have a look here. What do you guys think? Had a good enough step for that? I'm going to run it through one more. Another half turn. I don't think that's enough. Looking at it close enough there. All right, let me get this done. You get the idea. All right, I think that's good. I'm putting it up against that. I can flatten that out some, but she's fitting in there pretty good. Good, we'll be using that. Well, there she is, rough. You can see the, the little joggle in it. If I put it up, I get my hand the right way, we can put it up on here, and this is kind of what I'm looking for. All right, get in the right spot here. So I was gonna weld it right on the lip, on the edge. So I'm gonna get it tacked in place, and then get it all tacked all the way along, and then I'll have to take my time welding it. But that's it, that's kind of what we're looking at here for that. And that's gonna be more than enough wheel arch left over. Now, it'll only come to about right to here. The other one I'm going to have to build out and down, but we'll get to that when we get to it. You guys get the idea of what's going on here anyway so this is a slow process and uh, I'm gonna end the video here I actually I won't get this finished uh, right now because I have to I'm heading to Mexico for a week uh, I've got a young couple getting married nice young couple getting married friends of ours and they invited us to go to the wedding so I'm very happy for that and happy for them so I'm gonna end this video right here um, but you see what's going on. This is what will happen. And when, when I'm done, I'll take this off, cut those corners off, and then we'll have to do a button cut uh, to burn all that in. And then we have a good solid upper part of that wheel arch to work with so we can continue with the rest of them. And you guys have a great week. I'll see you when I get back from Mexico, and maybe I'll be a little tanned up, and maybe I will have shaved. I'm <laughs> starting to get pretty scruffy looking. All right, everyone have a good uh, week and take care and be safe.